In this video, we're going to talk about how a bicycle pump works. But before we go into the actual mechanics of how it works, let's begin our discussion with the principles of pressure and volume and airflow. So looking at this diagram that we have on the board, which side would you say has a higher pressure of gas? Would you say the left side or the right side? Now intuitively, you know that the left side has a higher pressure of gas. The reason being is there's more molecules per unit volume on the left side. As the number of gas molecules increases in a container, the number of collisions between those gas molecules and the walls of the container increases. And with more collisions, you have a greater force that's exerted by these molecules on the walls of the container. Now pressure and force are related. Pressure is force divided by area. So anytime you increase the force that's applied on a surface, you also increase the pressure. These two are dire uh, excuse me, directly related. If you double the force applied over on a surface, the pressure will double as well. So the right side must have less pressure than the left side. Now, here's a question for you. In which direction will air flow? Will it flow from the right side to the left side or from the left side to the right side? Air will naturally flow from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure. And there's more gas molecules on the left side, so those will, by diffusion, just flow into the right chamber or the chamber on the right side. Now, here's another question for you. How can you increase or decrease the pressure that is inside of a container? Perhaps from chemistry or physics class, you've heard of something called a Boyle's Law. And his law describes the relationship between pressure and volume. But here's what you need to know. As you increase the volume of a container, the pressure is going to decrease. And as you decrease the volume of a container, the pressure is going to increase. Now, in this diagram, we have two containers with roughly the same volume and the same number of molecules, so the pressure is approximately equal. But what's going to happen if we apply a downward force on the piston? As we apply a downward force on a piston, the volume of the container on the left side is going to decrease. And as we said before, according to Boyle's law, the pressure should increase because we're compressing air. As illustrated by the diagram on the right, the volume of the container on the left side has been reduced by a factor of two. So it's been cut in half the pressure is going to increase proportionally. So the pressure is going to increase by a factor of two. So on the left side, we have a region of high pressure. And on the right side, we have a region of low pressure. So air is going to flow from the region of high pressure to the region of low pressure. So it's going to flow into the container on the right side. So now we have the situation represented by the diagram on the board. At this point, the pressure in both containers is about the same. Now what's going to happen if we lift up the piston? Let's say if we pull it up. This is referred to as upstroke. What do you think is going to happen? Well, according to Boyle's law, if we increase the volume, if we expand the gas, the pressure is going to decrease. The pressure always decreases when, whenever a gas expands. So now let's move on to the next diagram. As we can see, the volume has increased, and so the pressure is lower on the left side. And on the right side, we have a region of higher pressure. So at this point, air is going to flow from the right side to the left side. It always flows from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure. But now, in a typical bike pump, 
the chamber on the right side would usually represent the tire and the chamber on the left side should represent the pump because that's where the piston is located. In this case, we don't want air to flow out from the tire back into the pump because that would defeat the purpose of pumping air into a tire. So how can we prevent air from flowing from the tire to the pump? In this case, we need a valve, particularly a one-way valve, a valve that will allow air to flow from the pump to the tire and not the other way around. Now for the picture on the left, we're going to say the left chamber has more pressure than the chamber on the right. And then we're going to have a valve. Right now the valve is closed as represented by the red line. Now because the left side has a higher pressure than the right side, air is going to flow from left to right. So as a result, it's going to push the valve open in order to do so. So the valve is going to open. Let's do that again. And then air is going to flow to the right side. Now, for the picture on the right side, we're going to say the chamber on the left has a lower pressure and the chamber on the right has a higher pressure. And let's say initially the valve is open. Air will flow from or will want to flow from the right side to the left side. But as that happens, it's going to push the valve towards the left. Now, because we have this piece of material here, it's not going to allow the valve to open this way. As air pushes the valve, the valve is going to close at this position. It can't go any further because that little block here is in the way. As a result, air is not able to flow from the right chamber to the left chamber. And so this is a one-way valve that keeps air in the tire, preventing it from coming back out through the pump. Now let's go ahead and put everything together. So on the left side, we have the bike pump. And on the right side, we're going to say this compartment represents the tire. I know it doesn't look like a tire, but just for the sake of simplicity, let's say that represents the tire. Now, when you raise the piston to a tie position, initially, the pressure that is inside that chamber is low with respect to the pressure of the atmosphere. The atmospheric pressure at sea level is 1 atm, one unit of atmospheric pressure, which is about 14.7 psi or pounds per square inch. Now, at this instant, air is going to flow from the atmosphere into the pump. Because as we said before, air flows from a region of high pressure to low pressure. And this is going to continue until the pressure of the atmosphere is equal to the pressure inside the pump. And notice that while this is happening, this valve will be in an open position because as air flows this way, it's going to force that valve to open. And that is the inlet valve. Now, let's say if we reverse the pressures, let's say for educational purposes, that the pressure inside the pump is higher than the pressure of the atmosphere. In this case, air will want to flow outward. And as a result, some of the molecules will exert a force on the inlet valve, thus closing it. And so it's going to be in the closed position, preventing air from coming out. So the inlet valve allows air to flow into the pump, but it prevents air from flowing out of the pump. Now let's go back to the situation that we had before. So when the piston is at the top, the atmospheric pressure will be higher 
than the air pressure inside the pump. And as a result, air is going to open the inlet valve flowing into the pump until the two pressures reach a state of equilibrium. Now while the pressure is low inside the pump, the tire will usually be at a higher pressure at that point. And so air will want to flow this way from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure. But because of this piece, as we said before, the outlet valve will be in the closed position, preventing air from flowing in that direction. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to push the piston down. So we're going to apply a downward force to compress the air in the left side. And what we're going to do is we're going to decrease the volume of the chamber in the left by a factor of 10. It could be different for different pumps, but 10 is a nice number to deal with. So if we decrease the volume by a factor of 10, the pressure is going to increase by a factor of 10. Now before this, once air flowed into the pump, the two pressures will be the same. It's going to reach a state of equilibrium. So after air has been allowed to flow into the pump, the pressure inside here will be the same as the atmospheric pressure, 1 atm. But now, when we apply a downward force to compress the air on the left side, the pressure is going to increase by a factor of 10. So it's going to be 10 atm if we decrease the volume by a factor of 10. So at this point, the pressure inside the pump is going to be very high and it's going to be higher than the pressure inside the tire. So as a result, air is going to flow from the pump into the tire, forcing the outlet valve to be in the open position. In addition, the atmospheric pressure is still 1 atm, so it's lower than the pressure inside the pump. So air will also want to flow in this direction, but it won't be able to because the inlet valve will now be in the closed position. So air has only one way to travel, that is from the pump into the tire. And so that's how a bike pump works. So basically you apply a downward force to compress air, increasing the pressure, forcing that air to flow into the tire. And you have two valves, the inlet valve and the outlet valve, which works in a way to allow air to flow in but it prevents, flow, it prevents air from flowing in the outward direction out of the pump. So that's the basic mechanics of how uh, the bike pump works. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.